Okay, I'm going to do another test of the firebox in its inverted position. I tested this um, with the boiler plate and I've done a little bit of water boiling with it and the temperature isn't hot enough for me to think that it's efficient for boiling water um, but I think it might be a great position for cooking so I want to go ahead and try it out for cooking so I'm going to take the boiler plate and slide the ash pan over it okay and then I'm going to put it into this position here so now that's locked in there so you could use that to make a grilled cheese sandwich a little griddle top there um, but what I'm going to do with it today is that's going to hold the whole firebox into its position so that the fire grate itself can go down and then what I'll do is I have it sitting up on this block so if you were in nature you'd, you'd need to find a rock or kind of a ledge or something because when you feed this wood in the side it needs to go up in at just a little bit of an angle if it goes up in at an angle then you open up the wind damper in the back and that allows air to flow in directly underneath the fire there. I'm going to use some paper to get this going in the interest of time. In all fairness, uh, when I collected these sticks, I did have to spend some time finding nice straight ones, uh, kind of grooming the gnarly branches off, uh, because I'm out here with sagebrush mostly, and sagebrush and juniper, um, and there's not a lot of straight sticks when you're working with sagebrush and juniper. So I have this. This is a piece of a fence. So it's nice and straight. But I'll go ahead and start some of these pieces in here. And I think you kind of want the same size pieces as what you would want uh, if you were using the fire the firebox in its uh, in its traditional position in its upright position uh, about the size of your finger I think is probably going to be about best I'm going to go ahead and get these sticks in here and Go ahead and give it a try here. Go ahead and put my pot right. back in. Wow, that actually looks like it might be a pretty great temperature for cooking. get that so you can see a little bit better. It's actually cooking very nicely. Go ahead and wiggle these sticks in just a little further. Maintain our fire. Now a couple of these sticks are pretty big and a few of them are kind of smaller so I guess you'd kind of learn uh, what size sticks are going to produce what kind of temperature on the stove 
and probably a smaller diameter sticks are gonna gonna give you a little bit of a hotter fire. But I've got the wind going in to this back side, so it's going into the damper, and uh, I think that's how you'd want to orient it uh, as far as the breeze goes. over. Alright, well I got that turned over without breaking it. And I'll go ahead and take off this camera and Kind of give you the view here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. That might be a good way to control the temperature as well by using that wind damper. These are coming along nice. You can see down there, it's just a nice little efficient fire. And this does use less fuel than the traditional setup for the firebox. Um, but your fire is limited on how hot you can get it. And you can't produce hot coals this way either. Well, so you can see there's plenty of heat there to uh, to cook an egg. And I just got a little bit carried away with the heat and didn't watch this quite close enough. Got a little bit too dark there. I would try again, but I'm out of eggs. But I'm still going to eat this one. That looks good. Well, that's kind of how camp cooking goes sometimes. <laughs>